we were living from season to season as clubs. And yes, I sit uh, technically the top of the tree after last season with Dundalk. And obviously we have a challenge this year from other clubs coming after us. But I've come from clubs like Longford Town for many years where even as players, we had to fundraise for training. Kiss. So I get it. I'm not sitting here saying we have to do this, we have to do that. We get it. But that's where we're at with League of Ireland. Um, whether we like it or not, it's the most participated sport in the country, but it's the most underfunded. Um, whether we like it or not. And uh, Until clubs have money, we can't go beyond October. Is this a chance for everybody to get together and kind of say, well, what should the league actually look like in the future? Or everybody seems to be at each other's throats a little bit at the moment. Maybe now is not the time to have those conversations. Yeah, I don't think that's a fair reflection. I'm, I, I'm, like The managers don't run football, uh, unfortunately. We don't run it. Uh, people above us run it. So a lot of managers would contact each other and we all have a lot of the same sort of interest. Uh, for example, we've arranged to play uh, Derry City, which isn't that common where two teams in the same league would play each other. And we probably play one or two other Premier Division clubs. Uh, we've agreed to play a couple of others. But that's all around ourselves and Derry being ready for Europe. So there is there is people talking to each other. The meetings, I don't think, are as bad as what people think they are. But people have to fight their own corner. And as I, as I go back to, because it suits everyone in Ireland, go back to the Premiership. We were heading down the same road in the Premiership with the likes of Watford, Brighton, um, Villa. Yeah. And something that they weren't coming back if you were playing away from uh, home because it wasn't a fair reflection. And they were trying to protect themselves. So there's nothing wrong with us protecting ourselves. Um, you just wonder, you'd wonder, is, is a, can the FEI, can government uh, get the most participated sport in this country back up and running and meaningful running? By, and by that, ultimately, it means it needs money. And, um, you know, where is sport in this country? And, and that's a bigger debate for you guys. It would be better to do that. But where is sport? When you look at the new ministers being announced, sport is part of uh, a list of five or six different things and, and sport as well is thrown in there. So the most, we're, we're in a difficult situation. And, and it's not, but it's not as bad as people think. We're closer than people think, I feel. One last question. What, why, what, what did Rovers actually want? What, why, why is it in their interest to have a slightly shorter season? Surely they would want more games too. I, I don't know. To be honest with you, um, you, you could argue, like this is where we're, we're, I haven't been accused of being balanced at times. This is where it would be balanced. The one up, the, 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 what, what has ultimately been decided for now uh, means that all of the 13 games would be competitive, I feel. That, and what I mean by that is that teams in tour glass, port glass will have to try against everyone else. So it probably is a closer solution to sport and integrity. Um, and at least the season is finished and balanced. The, the problem is, though, we probably have a couple of clubs, uh, and I don't want to name anyone in particular, who may come back under a different, uh, a different guide than what they started the season with. And it may be a matter of a European spot being resolved by, say, third place in Europe, ourselves and bowls on level points, and it's a matter of who beat that bottom side by more goals than the other team. That's not. And and that can happen by accident over yeah. a long period of season. But we're at that, well, we beat them 7-0 and you only beat them 6-0. Well, I don't know whether that's the fairest way to resolve a season. Um, and, and there's a lot of stake for our clubs. European football is massive for us. Pity, just, just on... To finish up, what does happen next? And like, it's pretty stark when you talk about 18 games in 18 months. And you think of somebody like Jack Byrne only playing that amount of games as the, the actual damage it can have to the quality of the league because it felt like it was in a good place with those opening four or five matches. And you have Jordan Flores, Wonder Goal, and there's bigger crowds coming to pretty much every stadium. And the quality of football is going up all the time. Have you got a sense from your players and other managers around the league as to? whether they want to stay in this league if they're only going to play 13 more games between now and next March, having only played five games since last November. Like, are we going to lose potentially Jack Byrne without bringing it down to one player? Are you looking at some of the better players at Dundalk who are looking at English League One Championship thinking, well, I'm far, far better off. At least I'll play some football, regardless of money or whatever. Yeah, li listen, there's, there's a couple of answers to that. and I, I know we're finishing up. So, so, for example, look what the people of Sligo have done for their ground. It's one of the best grounds in the country. Uh, and I wouldn't be in no way, shape or form standing here ready to criticise anybody in Sligo, OK? But they have got a difficult set, set of circumstances in terms of they need finance to go beyond October. 
They want to play football. That's a fact. Uh, but someone like Jack Bourne is now heading into a situation where, uh, what a brilliant player, what a brilliant advertisement for our league. Look, we all feel he should be on billboards around Tala, everywhere else. Uh, as much as it killed me driving around Tala seeing him, it would be great that he was there. And vice versa, Pat Hoban should be on billboards in, in Dundalk. And, but these players uh, would play 18 games over an 18 period of their lives. Careers in football are so short. So if somebody came to me, we, we've a couple of players out of contract at the end of the season, like any other club, and they, they would have to question where we stand. Um, because are we heading for another, after the season finishes, are we heading for another three months of people trying to argue about the, the league for next season? Because it looks like restructuring is about to happen. Um, so... Uh, to be honest with you, I fear, I fear for the players, um, for someone like Gary Rogers, who you know, you know, think of Gary for argument's sake, who's who's 38 and uh, last couple of years of his career, he would say he played till 50, but that's Gary. But he's heading into a situation again, 18 games over uh, an 18 month period or there thereabouts. That's difficult for players, and um, that's not good. But I keep saying that we're not unique in this. I look at GEA county managers, even on your own show, complaining about different bits and pieces. The lockdown was easy. Restarting is obviously difficult, and um, but there is we are closer to playing than than people think. That's the only good thing. I just wish it was a better structure we we're coming back to. Yeah. Well, look, the, the games are coming. There's 30 days to the first game. We wish you the best of luck with the restart. Congratulations on the pro license, and thanks a million for making the time to talk to us this morning. Thank you, appreciate it. It's uh, Vinnie Perth there giving us some thoughts on the situation in the League of Ireland. That is pretty much all we've got time for on the show this morning here. If you missed any of it, you can listen back on podcast. The best place to get our podcast is now, of course, on the OTB Sports app. Uh, you just download the app and you can get all our podcasts. You can subscribe, turn on notifications so that anytime we update any of the pods that you subscribe to, you end up uh, getting a little ping. Uh, we talked about Bruno Fernandes and Manchester United on the show this morning. We had the sports news with Shane Hannan, sports pages and latest stories. Uh, Rory Gallagher, this is all timestamped as well, so you can flick through to the bits that you want. If you're just a GA fan, you can listen to Rory Gallagher talking about uh, Derry and Killy Begg, somebody who's very well placed to talk about the club versus county debate. Dr. Kevin Moran joined us to talk about the protocols around COVID 19 if a player tests positive in your club. And it's going to happen. You can see that. Um, were you, did you see the video of the house party in Waterford, Nathan? No. Uh, 63 people, 64 people coming out of a house party broken up by the cops. An, right. Air, an Airbnb, it turned out. Oof. So they just went away for the weekend, brought it from Dublin down to Waterford. Oh, no, I presume these are these are locals. Uh, okay. One of the tweets was, they look very Waterford. Um, <laughs> so Did they love their county? They did love their county. <laughs> they loved, and, and look, it is happening, you know, I mean. Uh, I we, think I would listen to, I would most definitely listen to that piece uh, because... I think it'll be a bit of a shock to the system for a lot of club players that if you're playing against an opponent and they test positive, that you are going to have to isolate and stay away from work for, well, a couple of days at least. And I guess we need to say how quickly that contact tracing can get into place. But Do we have I'd, I'd imagine a huge amount of players wouldn't have even thought of that. Do we have a contact tracing app? No, we don't. What is it? Start of July, we don't have that contact tracing app. So it's going to be impossible for for that not to be longer than a couple of days, I would suspect, as uh, especially as the spike in cases happens. You know, we went from 10 cases to 24 cases and we'll see exactly what happens next as, as people go out and start celebrating and, and no one's wearing masks. Like, just, and you've and you got to trust that the, the guy in the contact tracing will admit that he was at the party with 63 people down in Waterford. And that he knows any of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So look, stick your masks on. Uh, uh, with Graham Hunter on talking about the future for Barcelona and the impact that La Liga has had on the general morale of the population in Spain. And Vinnie Pirate, always very thoughtful, uh, a great guest as well. I want to tell you about what's on OTB Sports Radio today. Chris Waddle Gold coming your way at one o'clock. A brilliant Chris Waddle feature-length interview. John Giles, all-time Wales 11, a retro panel from 2013. It's the uh, sports photography panel. Guest photographers Lorraine O'Sullivan and Ray McManus. I'm pretty sure Lorraine O'Sullivan takes the iconic photograph of uh, Keane and McCarthy after the 1-0 win against Holland in 2001, September 2001. And then uh, gold today from 6 o'clock, Paul McGrath talking about the Jack Charlton era. So just head over to the radio section on the OTV Sports app and all that goodness is yours, free gratis and for nothing.